Hello and welcome to Vavork. I'm Brian Watrous and this is part 39 in a 10 part video series where we're discussing how to automate using vRealize Orchestrator. Um, this is one of several videos in which we're discussing the PowerShell plugin for Orchestrator. If you haven't seen um, the, the first video and onwards, the first video in this series is number 36. Anyways, let's uh, continue onwards here. Uh, as you can see here, we're in the Vero client and we are actually looking at the workflow we just discussed in the previous video. In the previous video, we went into the workflows tab, we went to library, PowerShell, configuration, and we ran add a PowerShell host to teach Orchestrator how to talk to a specific Windows server that is capable of running PowerShell scripts. But Having set all that up, plus the things in the video before that, we now have our orchestrator server able to talk to the, to the Windows machine. So let's see what we can actually do with the configuration that we've set up. What we're gonna look at next is this workflow here called generate an action from a PowerShell script. So let's uh, select that, run it, and see what it does. When you run the workflow, the first thing it asks you to do is to supply some actual PowerShell scripting to say what you want this action to do. Again, the action that's gonna get created is a VRO action that you can call from your VRO workflow, but what ends up happening when that action gets called is whatever code you specify here gets executed on the remote um, Windows server that has PowerShell and WinRM. So we need to specify uh, in this example here, we're specifying a commandlet. We're using write-output to um, output a string, hello world. Uh, but we can use whatever commandlets, uh, whether those are PowerShell commandlets or PowerShell CLI commandlets. We can use all those commandlets plus the traditional um, programming constructs like if then, else type statements, while loops, and so forth. Uh, all the functionality that's available in a PowerShell script is available to us here. You just type in the code that you want executed. In the next section, so after you hit the next button, the next page asks you to tell us what do you want us to call this new VRO action that we're generating for you. And additionally, here in this module section, when you click not set, you can pick which action module you want your new VRO action stored in. Again, remember, modules are just uh, containers that hold actions. So what do you want the action called and which module do you want it stored in? Just tell us and then hit next. And on the next page, you have, um, I like to think of this as the optional page. Optionally, you can tell us, I don't just want an action generated. I also want you to generate a workflow that will call that action. Again, this step is optional, but if you say yes, you can specify the folder where you want the workflow to be generated and you're done. So you hit select and what happens behind the scenes is the action gets created and a workflow gets created. So let's take a look at what these look like. So as you can see here, we've switched to the actions tab and we're looking in the module that I specified I want my workflow created in. So here's my hello world action. And if we were to edit this action and look at its scripting, we would discover that this action has uh, two input parameters, a host and a session ID. Now the host that you see here is the host that we configured in the previous video. The session ID we haven't talked about before, but I'll show you where that comes from here shortly. So this action takes those two input parameters, it runs the PowerShell code, and then this workflow excuse me, this action returns something called a PowerShell colon PowerShell remote PS object. Um, in videos, I believe it was 33 through 35, I talked about the API Explorer. You can go into the API Explorer and uh, learn all the details of this PowerShell object. Uh, but in, in effect, what that PowerShell object, remote PowerShell object thing is, is an object that will contain the the exit status of um, us running the code, the PowerShell code that you asked us to run, plus the output and errors and so forth. But here you can see the actual code that's being called by the action to invoke the PowerShell code that you specified. So you recall when we ran the generate workflow, 
we specified the code that we want it executed. So here's the, the PowerShell code. It's being stuffed into a variable called PS script. And then it calls a, a, an action, not the one that got generated for us, but an act, another action called invoke script, which as you can see, uh, exists in another module called com.vmware.library.powershell. So our new action that we generated for you is going to call the existing action called invoke script. It's going to pass in the host that we specify. I'll show you how that works in a moment. The script that we just specified. And there's that session ID again. So what what is this session ID thing? Well, again, you're going to find out in just a moment. But this here is the action that got generated. And this is the code that will get executed to call your PowerShell code when this VR action is invoked. So that's what the action looks like. But how do you call it? Well, you recall the workflow we just ran gave us the option to generate a workflow to call this action. So let's take a look at that. Here is the workflow that was automatically generated for us. So the workflow is called invoke script and then whatever we call the action. Invoke script hello world in this example. Again, this is just a workflow. So if we edit it and go to its schema tab, let's see what we see. When we go to the schema tab, we see that the schema has our new action. So here's hello world, the action that just got generated for us. But it's wrapped with some other stuff. Uh, we've got some error handling down here. We've got a um, uh, endpoint here. But notice at the beginning, we've got this action called open session. What that action does is generates the connection to the Windows machine where our PowerShell code is going to run. And it, this action returns the session ID that we just saw a few moments ago that's one of the two required inputs to Hello World. So if you want to, you can just call this workflow and it's got everything you need to invoke your new action. Uh, alternatively, you can take these same pieces and implement them in your own workflow. So if you want to create your own workflow, you're going to need your action. Plus, you're also going to need open session and closed session. Plus, again, I uh, should do some error checking to, to make certain nothing went wrong. So you do not have to use the automatically generated uh, workflow, but it does illustrate how you need to set things up. Now that we've got our auto-generated workflow, we can run it by clicking on the Run button. When we do so, a window pops up. Uh, this window, um, not the one on top, but the one behind it. This window here is the window that pops up to ask us to supply input parameters. As you can see, the, the first page of input parameter questions asks us to specify which PowerShell host we want the code to run on. And then once we select that, on the second page of input parameters, uh, in this particular case, it's blank because we didn't do something that I'm going to teach you to do in the next video. In this video, the action that we created took no input parameters from the user who's calling our workflow. Instead, all our first example does is it always outputs the message, hello world. But what if you wanted your workflow to be in the underlying action to be more flexible. Well, that's what I'm going to show you how to do in the next video. So join me over in video number 40, and I'll show you how to do that using something called a placeholder.